Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we are screening for price to sales ratio with Kevin Matris, our stock screening expert here at Zax.com. And I know we've talked about this before. Right. It's been a while. Right. But this one seems to be one that you like to repeat periodically. <laughs> yeah, it is indeed. I would tell you, aside from the Zax rank, if there was only one item uh, that I could screen on or pick stocks with for the rest of my life, it would have to be the price of sales ratio. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. All right. So for those who have never seen us talk or heard us talk about this, what exactly is price to sales ratio? All right. Check it out. Let's start off with the definition. Price to sales ratio is simply price divided by sales. And it is a ratio used for determining a company's under or overvaluation. So if the price to sales ratio is one, that means you're paying $1 for every $1 of sales the company makes. Mm -hmm. A price to sales ratio of two means you're paying $2 for every $1 of sales the company makes. As you might have guessed, the lower the price to sales ratio, the better. So, a price to sales ratio of 0.5, for example, means you're paying 50 cents for every $1 of sales the company makes. And in my opinion, paying less than a dollar for a dollar's worth of something is a good bargain. Okay, so why is this one of your favorite uh, screens? Well, for one, the price to sales ratio looks at sales rather than earnings like the P.E. ratio does. And sales are harder to manipulate on an income statement like earnings. Secondly, I would be hard pressed to find a screen where adding the price to sales ratio to it didn't help improve it. Now for me, I prefer to look at companies where there is a price to sales ratio of less than one, but I am willing to go up to as much as four. But in my testing, I have found that companies with a price to sales ratio of less than one produces the best returns. Between one and two, you still see significant outperformance. Once you get over four though, now you're starting to see the odds work against you. But I would say the best way to use it that I have found is to be able to compare a company's price to sales ratio to the median for its respective industry because some industries have different normal price to sales ratio so you want to make sure that it's it's firing better than the industry itself. And is that the context we're using it in here? Yeah that's what we're doing today so there's a bunch of other stuff in here but the screen starts off by looking at companies where the projected growth rate is greater than uh, the average for the market the S&P so we're looking for uh, above market growth both rates, okay. okay. We also want the last earning surprise and the last sales surprise to be greater than zero. So we want to be able to see them beating on both the top line and the bottom line. Zach's rank factors in here again, one of my favorite items. We're looking for companies with a Zach's rank of less than or equals to two. So they have to be a strong buy or a buy as rated by Zach's. Mm -hmm. Then the price to sales ratio comes in and I want the price to sales ratio to be less than or equals to the median for its respective industry. And then I'm applying all of these things to companies where the price is greater than five and the average volume is greater than 100,000 shares or better. All right, give us a couple of stocks that came through. There was a bunch of stocks that came through. I think there was like maybe about 50 or 60 stocks that made it through. Here's five. You've got Khaki International, Lincoln Electric, uh, Mueller Industries, NN Incorporated, Trinity Industries, all of these companies uh, have outsized growth rates, they've surprised in the past, and they all have price to sales ratios below the median for the industry. I think that is a critical thing. Own any? Um, no. If you want to take a look at a text version of this week's Screen of the Week, go to our homepage, zax.com, and right next to Kevin's picture is where you'll find the live link that takes you to it. And if you want to find out more about the Research Wizard, the tool that Kevin uses to achieve all of his screens, zax.com forward slash research wizard is the place to go. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.